Hey everyone. Okay, Scorpio. Uh, this is your mid December into the New Year reading. Okay, uh, any anyone, any Von, anyone who is new, <laughs> welcome. Um, and anyone returning, of course. Nice to nice to have you back. Thanks for being here. Okay. Firstly, there's so much fire here. It's all, the base of your reading is fire. I see it all depends on the way that you look at it to how successful it's going to be. Okay, sort of a law of attraction kind of situation. Um, your shadow side is letting you know that it's interesting I went there first, right, in a way. But there's nothing wrong with the shadow side, you know what I mean? Like, unless we let the shadow side get way out of hand. You know, sometimes that's where, where we get our power from, it's where we get our, like, our deep passion from, plus your Scorpio, you're deep. Here you are right here. King of Cups, that's your card. Scorpio King all day. Okay? Um, so we still have another king on the bottom of the deck here. Uh, this king of swords, which could be any air sign, but this is technically Libra. The sign before you, obviously. Um... The shadow side, though, the first message I heard is that, like, it, your shadow side is letting you know that it's okay for you to walk away from something. Or, uh, and there, there are steps to life. It's important what we hold in our hands, okay? I'm like shaking right now, it's interesting. And when I looked down at my hand, it didn't look like my own hand. That was really strange. Huh. Um... Emotionally, you can handle whatever it is that you need to walk away from also. It'll put you in a position of you being able to be more clear about about where it is that you want to go, about what it is that isn't enough for you, and actually in a little bit what, what you're afraid of right now, okay? Like where you feel tight about things. Um, you do have a, a an ace right in the center. This is the heart of the matter is this... Ace of Pentacles, which is wonderful. That's a blessing right there. Straight. The Ace of Pentacles is also, out of all the um, aces, is the most stable. You know, it's Earth. The likelihood of it achieving is, um, you know, its full potential, if you will, is, is more likely than any of the other ones. Each person on, uh, there's two, p there's people on either side of this blessing, though. Like, the blessing's in the center. These people have their back turned towards it. It's interesting, actually. Um, I mean, there is a progression here. I actually sort of see, like, what do they call that? one step forward, two steps back, but this is like one step forward, one step back. It's like you're kind of 
that's what the foundation is doing right now, is in and out, which actually, when Mercury is in retrograde, it's kind of, well, I was just going to try to be as smart as Santos Bonacci, and I never will. <laughs> But that is kind of, Mercury retrograde kind of does that. It's like a it's like a push and a pull. That's why people are like, you know, can't actually get the words out of their mouth. It's like, a, you know, whatever. That sort of situation. But it's within the fire realm, so it's something to do with, A, sort of your communication. Although none of these cards really express communicating. And then the only sword you have otherwise is this and this. But neither one of these people, are, uh, these situations, or these cards are talking um, they have the ability to say something if they want to, but I see there's more of an observation to what's going on around you right now is, is more of the, the energy of it, okay? I see a pattern here, hold on, but it's not a bad pattern, it's like figuring out the puzzle, um, hold on, There's something about, uh, well, the first message, I guess these are general, right? The first message I s heard was someone stressed out with their marriage. Uh, it can also be someone stressed out with their home, something about that. Um, there can be just stress within the home. But someone actually figures out, it goes back to what I said in the beginning about the way that you look at the situation, um, somebody actually is figuring out, again, what is stressful to them. Like I said, what's tight, what's tight in your life? You know, what do you, what do you, I heard, what are you bugging about? What bugs you, right? That's where that saying comes from. Quit bugging. It's like, quit being nitpicky about whatever it is. Or figure out what it is. Like, if you have a bunch of fruit flies, like, did you do the dishes? You know, figuring out what it is, really, that's causing the problem. And then solving the problem. So that we can move forward, okay? And the reality is, is that actually... Well, it's interesting because personally as a reader I always see the past I see the past more than I see the past in the in the future more than I do technically the present when I read usually uh, that's what it shows me it's not like I'm choosing it's just like what is what what I can understand but of course it all is relevant to now as well there is no before or after there is and now is actually not now because now is already gone um, But the reality is, is that you, you're starting something fresh and new, and you know that, energetically, as well as literally the path that you're walking on, okay? And I see that now, you're kind of like, where do I go from here? Well... I heard you got to say what's on your mind.
You gotta say what's on your mind. It's like a magic spell. You gotta say what it is that you want. Literally, verbally, say it to yourself every morning, to other people. You be and be like, don't be like, oh, you know, I really want this thing, but it'll never work out because of that, 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 that. No, you do that, and you're like shitting on your own cake. Don't do that. You have to talk about it in a way you like that I'm directing. You must. You have to. But really, it makes a difference. If we're smiling, we're like, I want to fall in love. I want to love myself. I want to buy a house. When I buy that house, when I have my house, I'm going to have a pool table in it. You know, whatever. But it just, do you know anybody that knows anything about buying houses? Like, do you know anything? Like, do you know any people that are single? You know, if and when you're ready for that, which, no offense, Scorpio, I don't think you're ready. Uh, Jupiter needs to go through your first house before you're ready. It's been too heavy the last, you know, I heard 12 years. I mean, that is technically the cycle of Jupiter, but... Also, since you were three, <laughs> been stressing. So, <laughs> sorry. But don't be afraid, okay? Your strength is right now is that you... Ah, cool, okay. Right now, you have an opportunity to walk down a new path literally during this time, which, of course, will be later, too. It's the same difference, but... Right now isn't exactly the time, and, and it makes sense. Everyone's receiving sort of a wait, wait and see sort of situation, okay? Because there's contemplation that needs to that needs to be had. There's direction that needs to be. There's conversation that needs to be had about the direction of the situation, okay? Because if you don't, what happens is it's just going to be like, like I said, it's like in and out, back in the Mercury or whatever, it, um, which is also hard, right? Because we're talking about communicating. But then, we're also talking about communicating during uh, a retrograde in well, the full moon was in Gemini when it happened, so to me that is, you know, part of that energy. But it all affects everyone in a different way, according to the sign. But I say you're tired of fighting. I say you really want to figure out what the direction is, okay? I see that what you want is for uh someone to have the wherewithal to be able to question what it is. Uh, not only question, but What you want is to I just keep hearing change your world. Like not have to lock up your passions anymore. Not have to feel so stuck in your creativity. Not have to feel like you're starting at square one. Not have to feel alone. particularly that loneliness feeling, that underlying, like, in the background sort of shadow, darkness, unknow I just keep saying unknowing, has something to do with you being able to walk away from situations that are not suiting to you. I see that within your mind and the physical world, okay? But it also has to do with the people that are around you and whether they're good for you or not. And I see that this person is smiling. They're not, they're not like, oh, God, I'll, I'll never be able to walk away from you. I'm having deja vu, by the way. But just sort of being like, hey, man, neither one of us are winning or losing where we are right now. So considering it's a neutral point, See you later.
you know? Not everything lasts forever. You're more emotionally mature than you think that you are also, okay? Ah, I also see that someone is probably going to, for the majority of you, offer you something, okay? That's going to trigger some sort of emotion, and you're going to have to um, express, although it's only been like a month, but it's sort of like a little test to see how you react and whether you accept it or whether you walk away from it, okay? Um, it shows me here that your weakness is that you really want to work with other people. You don't want to feel alone, like I was saying, something about that. So you may take it. It's that one. Because you want to have fun. There's two threes on top of each other. The only time three is a balanced number, technically, is when, to me, is when it's a three-legged stool. But a three-legged stool only works for one person. It doesn't work for a... You can't make a three-legged bench. You know what I mean? So, in this time, I'm not saying while well, Jupiter's in your first house, you have to be all alone with yourself. Because, of course, these are for, like... Uh, not for, like... These readings are for Scorpio, anyone who has Scorpio in whatever part of their chart, okay? Which, of course, is expanding wherever Scorpio is in their chart. Now, well, I'm no astrologer, but that would be my, uh, my thought on it in ways of logic and how everything affects everything else. Nothing is ever not... Uh, affected by something. That's why palmistry, or um, I don't know how to say it, like chirography, it's like C-H-I-E-R-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y, is the study of the lines on your hands. And the reason why that was a thing for a, a situation, which is actually coming back, just like tarot is, which is cool, it's like different divinations, um, methods, if you will, but it's because God, technically, or whatever you believe in, um, these are distinctive and individual to each person, okay? And they change all the time. Um, so, in that, nothing is random, right? Okay, cool. Look at that. Awesome, actually. You got the, uh, Queen of Swords, which is Aquarius's card, but any air sign. You have the Eight of Pentacles, Judgment, Sun, Emperor. This represents Aries, which w uh, Jupiter's in, technically, those with a sun sign is in your first house, okay? We also obviously have Aries in our chart. Now, and now, I just felt like I was, I was like some old professor. Now, lesson here. <laughs> cool, you go from the page to the queen with the ten of pentacles in the center. You're more mature than you think that you are. It's just, you know... The way that you relate to your mother emotionally affects the way that you see home and stability, okay? And there's just some way that you have to start thinking about it differently. It's really not a big deal. You're not her. You're allowed to, you know, be and do whatever you like, okay? It's your life. Now, I like that the king was here before and now the queen, okay? So... It could be that there's an air sign that's coming in and out of your life also that's sort of in and out. But she's really clear about what's going on in what she what it is that she's working on, okay? She's able, the Queen of Swords is able to make appropriate judgment calls, okay? She ain't messing around. She knows what's going on, okay? Queen of Cups, I'm not saying she never makes a mistake, but like the Queen of Cups, the King of Cups, no offense to the water, to you water, 
But sometimes emotions can be. Um, it all depends. I mean, you have fire down in the bottom here, and then there's water on the top. So to me, that shows hot. Um, that shows me hot water. Okay, that can be dangerous. It, you, you really have to temper it appropriately. And in a way, I actually see that you understand that and you're starting to uh, figure that out a bit because when you're going back and forth, it means you're, you're sort of tweaking with the temperature. Okay, that's good. You don't want to burn anybody. You don't want to burn yourself, right? Which all goes back to integrity, which the Queen of Swords also very much has. I do see something about you, about arrogance. I heard the word arrogance. I see that there, uh, there's, um, well, it's only for some of you, but there's an Aries as an issue with the Leo, okay? Also, see, for those of you who are worried about work, although it came out later, what it is that you're working on, or with the sun here, you're fine. But you do have to figure out, like, I am what? Like, I am a musician, I am an artist, I am a computer programmer, which is unfortunate, but no offense to those of you who do that, just wish we would do more of art. That can't be a natural skill, you know what I mean? That, that's a taught thing. It's a learned process. But whatever that is. But I guess even if something is unnatural to us, we can always learn how to do it right? We can train ourselves. We can learn it. We can also, if we can unlearn, if we can learn, we can unlearn. If we can unlearn, we can learn. So, when it comes to, you know, this is really, in they're really in charge, too, so in, it's like, you need to be in charge of your own energy, okay? Which way is it going? Again, you know, the emperor has to make sure that everything is in order, in ways of his kingdom, or it doesn't run smoothly, okay? Not everything is getting done the way that he would prefer it. I heard the word arrogance again, so there's something about perfection, but that all goes back to figuring out what doesn't, because part of life is being like, we talked about this, but when Jupiter's, especially for the star sign, sun sign, when Jupiter's in your first house, you have to, f yeah, you're going to figure out things like, I am awesome, I am beautiful, I am smart, I am strong, I am uh, able, capable. But you also have to look at things like, I am a liar, I am a thief, I am an asshole. I am impatient when I am blank. You know, like, I am able to work with others, uh, but I know that I also am an introvert. So I need a job where I am seen as black. You know, like, I am a lover. But I also am a person that doesn't necessarily snuggle. Like, I'm, I'm, I am drawn to people who are not available. Whatever, okay? Just going down the line, all the cards that I saw. But you know, you got to figure those out, those parts out too, because that's how you walk away from things. Because there's a lot of things that stop us in life that just literally live up in this little bone hat, okay? And it isn't doing anybody any good. Because being reborn is wonderful. Being free in yourself, being like, here I am. Take it or leave it. And I'm not saying take it or leave it where you don't work on any of the things that are challenging either. I do see this really intense. There's a lot of maturity in the way of there's like a knight to a king, a page to a knight, a page to a queen, uh, this, 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 uh, whatever, younger person, this really older, and they're even in the same purple. Like, you could be dealing with somebody that's either older than you or you're the younger person where there's like an age gap between you. It doesn't have to be utter utterly significant, especially from the page to the night. It could be like 10 to, f 10 to 15 years. But, the, uh, or also, again, of course, this is child to mother, mother to, uh, you know, child to father, etc. Like looking back at those kinds of relationships so that you understand what it is that
I am happy when I am blank. And then continuing to focus on what it is that, that really, that when you know what makes you happy, then you won't have to really, in a way, be concerned about, I mean, you want to consider it, but you don't have to teeter back and forth so hard about what way the path is, because you're already magnetically being drawn to what, what would be the sun for you, okay? And when you do what is within your natural progression and magnetism as a person, you know, that ex truly expands your Taurus, within all these Tauruses that we live within, uh, th then it means you're doing the right thing. You don't, it, it, there, there's less questioning about it, okay, because you're clear in your mind. And you're clear in your emotions and your feelings, okay? so cool. Hold on. What's this at? Oh, shucks, it's going to run out. I always feel like I'm so abstract. <laughs> Am I too abstract? I'm going to try to do little readings where I, like, hone in on just, like, well, I guess I just don't read like that because the thing is, is life isn't like that. Especially when it's like 10,000 people or whatever it is, even if it's 200 people, like, everybody goes through things a little bit differently and we relate them within our mind differently and that's what makes us individuals. That's also what separates us from our parents or, you know, whatever else, but of course, let us not forget ever that we're all mirrors of each other. I mean, even me, you know, or whatever other reader you, you watch or... Um, you know, musicians that you listen to, it's all reflections, wild, it's actually really cool if you look at it that way, it makes it easier, you know, it's a little, a little frustrating at first, because you look at yourself like, again, like, I am, am I, am I that? Alright, I'll see you in the new year.